Hello, this is Nina Bilby, Toolbox Talk number one on clay tools and their uses. Here we are, I hope you can see them all. Now I've got lots of tool tools in my toolbox for clay and they are divided into fancy pants tools that are specialist for specialist jobs, measuring tools, bashing and scraping tools, cutting tools, texture and taking away tools, modelling themselves, applying clay, wood and metal, and loop tools for cutting. We're going to go quickly through them and how they work in their best, um, the best way to use them, basically. Okay, so we'll start with bashing. I've got some terracotta clay here, and uh, my favourite uh, tool uh, for bashing clay is this. It's the inside of an old... Um, uh, made a carpenter's hammer mallet, sorry, and it's got a slight curve to it, and it's brilliant for tapping clay and putting a surface on it both ways. Now, obviously, this isn't going to work if you're making something very delicate, but it's brilliant for um, getting the shape pretty much where you want it very, very quickly. So, anything like this will work, and that's wooden, it's a wooden one, it's got a nice weight. The other bashing and shaping tools I have are homemade. They are bits of random hardwood with square ends, like this. And I use those to tap planes and shapes. Some are skinny, some are kind of a bit bigger. And you can make shapes with them in the clay. You can scrape with them. And you can model with them, tapping them in and tapping in planes to make sure that um, you're getting the right form before you start any fancy modelling. So these are these, very cheap to make, in fact free if you're clever. They are hardwood pieces and they have been sanded and wire-walled to quite a fine finish. The end grain has been polished and uh, this one has a bit of an angle on it which is brilliant for tapping an internal shape. So don't underestimate the power of these uh, pieces of wood, I've had them years, you get your favourites and they are a very, very useful tool when manipulating clay. The next ones are cutting tools. Oh, the obvious cutting tool in any uh, modeler's box is uh, a wire and that's a very clean cutting tool. You can stretch the wire and cut tiny pieces and manipulate the clay in a very delicate way or you can, most of you will have cut clay out of a bag and you know that you can just cut big lumps off. It also gives you a clean cutting surface which can be reapplied. You might take a piece of delicate moulding off your model, take away some bulk and want to put that delicate piece of modelling back and this is the tool for that. So stretched in a tiny uh, area or in a large area, brilliantly useful. The other three cutting tools I would suggest you think about is a clay cutting knife. Now this um, is a very sharp pointed knife with a very fine taper and that is brilliantly useful for drawing lines etc on the clay, drawing where you might possibly want something. Removing clay and if you are joining surfaces together this is also really useful for scratch and slip which I will cover in a different video. So this is a brilliant uh, knife tool um, can be a bit dangerous in the toolbox, so sometimes I put a bit of a cork on the end of it. Um, any model I'm doing, this would be one of the first tools I pick up. The second cutting tools are the metal spatula tools, and these come in different sizes and different shapes. You can see this one has got uh, two cutting ends, and um, this one has a kind of push modelling end and a cutting end. Now, they are stainless steel and they cut beautifully, they give clean surfaces and again they are brilliant drawing tools on the clay, uh, especially when finding centre lines or planes that you need to remove. These are excellent investment into your toolbox. Texture and making, taking away tools. Um, this one is not so well known for people who do modelling. This is a kidney, a metal ceramicist kidney and it has a little serrated edge on it and when you use it on the clay it gives a fabulous texture but it is also a great scraping and shaping tool. 
Um, they're nice and flexible. You can get them into shapes. They're very relatively inexpensive. You can make these out of old bank cards or old bits of plastic. Um, I've seen them made out of all sorts of things, bits of al old bits of aluminium, etc. Very, very handy tool. These are scraping tools and texture tools. Again, they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Um, these two the same there. Loop tools that can cut and shape like that. And you can see they remove clay in a quite a nice way. And these are quite nice when you get down to fine detail. But you can get them up to this size. And of course, that depends on the scale of the object that you're working on. Um, great for internals. If you're doing any kind of drapery model, I would suggest um, these are great internal, the back of the folds as they come around. Uh, brilliant for these. Um, they can be pretty brutal if you put too much force behind them. You have to be careful. But they can add a very, very beautiful cross-hatching um, texture on uh, clay. They come in different sizes, like I said, and this is kind of an internal uh, shape and a flat shape. Um, and again, they give a kind of nice scratched feel and they can remove clay quite easily. These are more of a finishing tool than a kind of a... a you're not really going to change a model dramatically using these. You're looking about fine surface changes. There's one with a very sharp point and a flat. Much finer. The last two I'm going to show you are the wooden ones. Now, often in kind of cheap uh, pottery kits you'll get a flat ended version of this and it will have teeth, wooden teeth on it sometimes I like to change the teeth on mine and I will take a file and just put additional teeth on it. These are great, I like these for going over a surface to get it smooth, you take the lumps and bumps out and then you can kind of go over it with a smoother kidney. Um, this one's also got a kind of modelled end I find these a bit uh, a bit too naive, I quite like a flat ended modelling tool but again you could put this on a piece of sandpaper and change that. Don't ever think that tools are uh, immovable, if a tool's not doing the job you need it to do, you always think about changing it. You know I was told that tools have to earn their keep, you know they pay rent, they're sitting in your workshop, they need to pay rent in the lifetime that they're with you, so make them useful for you. The other thing I have discovered over the years are paint brushes that have been cut down to a kind of stubby end and you can um, push with them in a soft way and get a kind of a delicate turn. These are not smoothing tools. Brushes are not smoothing tools. They are sculptural tools when it comes to modelling. And you can kind of use the stubby end to kind of tease the clay back into the body of the model um, and you can make them obviously out of any size brush. You have to keep them clean quite a lot, they get clogged up quite quickly. The next one is the basic modelling tools. Now spatulas, these are kind of like wooden spatulas, wood, wooden modelling tools. These are very large ones and these would be some of the first ones I pick up because you're adding clay perhaps to a model. And these are very useful. Um, you basically can put clay onto a surface and kind of manipulate it, spread it, push the clay, cut the clay, mould it with these. Now these are quite used, used really, really well in a rolling uh, direction. You put them on the clay and you kind of roll and you'll get a, a very controlled uh, bulk. And again, they're really useful for drawing, pushing and kind of in and out pulling of the teasing the clay out. I quite like this one because it's got a sharp point on the end and again you can get into small spaces and draw if you need to. This one's got two flat ends, quite a large one this one. And then it goes all the way down to um, these two. This is a very typical modelling tool that some of you will be very familiar with. Um, very delicate tool, probably one of the first tools you'll buy in the scale that you're working at school. Um, and you know, you're looking at pieces of clay about that size for this. Uh, also, you can draw with it because it's got a lovely kind of tapered sharp edge on both sides. And you can push curved, uh, you can use the kind of profile of the top of the tool and push a curve. Now, this is a very simple wooden one, homemade one, out of a piece of uh, doweling. And it's just simply a flat end 
and a uh, kind of a angle through the round of the dowel. And I use this quite a lot actually. I draw with it, I use that round end quite a lot to tap small pieces of clay into models. Really useful, really cheap. Doesn't matter if you lose it, you can make another one. And these are um, me metal tools doing the same job. So these are cutting tools, modelling tools, etc., with different shapes for different. You can also use these on wax, chevant, uh, any kind of modelling equipment. They resist quite well, the clay doesn't stick to them, and they're quite uh, rigid, there's no bend in them. Um, I like these at rolled ends for things like eyes, etc. And this one's quite nice, the sharp one for drawing, and it's got this lovely kind of flat application end to it, which is nice. And the last uh, tools I want to talk to you about are these, and these are called loop tools. They come in various sizes, some are very big, some are very, very tiny, um, and they remove clay. These one, this particular loop tool has got wire wrapped around it, and it, it takes away clay with a textured surface. But I really like this one um, for taking uneven surfaces off when I don't want to push the clay back into the model. It's got a round and a flat end. And these ones are cutting loop tools. So when you put them on the clay, they cut very cleanly a piece of clay off. And you can see how smooth the cut is there. And these are, these are cutting tools because the metal is flat. If the metal is round, often you get a completely different cut. This is a round uh, modelling wire, if you like. And the surface you will get from that is a dragged cut, not a clean cut has its uses but more preferable for potters um, for throne work rather than um, sculpture is generally uh, the more useful tool for you is the, the loop tools that have flat wire not round wire however when you get down to the tiny ones they are round wire because a flat wire would be far too delicate and because they're tiny they do give a very clean cut so they're the differences. So if you're buying them for sculpture, my advice would be to buy the flat wire and not the um, round wire ones. That's it for basic tools. Apart from, of course, measuring tools, I like to use a set of um, compass dividers, really useful for stepping off, and a tiny metal ruler for drawing on slabs and things. I've got various size rulers. And the most important tool in the box for keeping things healthy for a long time is your spray, your water spray. And along with this water spray, I would say a wet flannel or a towel, mainly to keep your hands clean and, of course, your tools clean. You can clean your tools as you go. Very important to keep your tools clean. That's it. Basic tools for sculpture. And I hope that was interesting. <laughs>